All right, the, uh, the community vote results are in. We tallied them up, and much to our surprise, the winner was the Craft Nordlight Ultra. So that is what we have been running in the last few weeks, and that is the first, I guess, community-voted shoe that we are going to review. Yeah, and I, I think the community is probably a lot like us in the sense that probably like you and I, at least me, I have been rooting for this brand for so long. I've been a longtime user of their apparel. And I don't know if it was two or three years ago when their shoe line started to come out, but I was stoked. And you and I have both talked offline. We've even reviewed some of their other shoes before. And we were like, it's kind of fallen short. Like, when are they going to sort of match up to their apparel? And, and at least for me, one of the questions in this episode is, um, are we one step closer towards expectations with this shoe? I, I think we are, but um, I'm excited. Yeah, definitely a step in the right direction for sure. Yeah, one thing that Kraft really knows how to do is door to trail. It seems like every single shoe that they have is a door to trail shoe for for better or worse. Um, before we get going, you know, just a little disclaimer that these shoes were provided to us by Craft and Running Warehouse, but we're under no financial obligation to say whether we like a product or not because we want to keep these reviews authentic and beneficial for you. No one will get to preview or watch this footage before it gets published to YouTube. Some stats about the shoe. $160 for the Craft Nordlight Ultra. My pair came in at 10.6, 10.8 ounces. Uh, about 305 grams. It's a pretty chonky shoe. It's 34 millimeters stack in the forefoot, 40 millimeters in the heel. Makes for a six millimeter drop. We're looking at a very simple, flimsy, thin, engineered mesh upper. One piece, one layer. You can you know see your foot straight through the holes. There's a tiny little overlay, underlay, innerlay. It's a layer on the inside of the mesh. I don't know. Maybe it's an interlay. Um, goes along the toe box. I feel like it's supposed to give the toe box just a little bit of shape, but there's no, nothing for toe protection uh, coming from the upper. You know, you're all getting it from this you know, slightly swoopy rocker design. There is an additional piece of fabric um, on the midfoot that goes from, you know, the bottom of the bottom of the upper up to the lace eyelets normally this is where like the gusseted tongue would start to come into play but the fabric just ends at the lace eyelets and it's not attached to the tongue at all uh, it's just a loose tongue and it's only connected at the very bottom of the shoe there is a little bit of starchier material around the heel cup but there's no actual plastic piece in the heel cup so it's kind of mediumly structured very light amount of foam around the heel and ankle collar as well and we got our kind of classic swoopy achilles that's pretty much it for the upper uh the tongue is the tongue has no padding there's a couple like laminated overlays there but you know i would say it's perhaps the simplest upper that we've seen on a on a trail shoe so far the midsole is a new foam from Kraft, and this was definitely what got me super excited about this shoe when I saw it unveiled at the running event last fall in 2022. This is Kraft's CR foam. It is a super critical nitrogen-infused EVA. So think Brooks DNA flash foam in the Hyperion series as well as the Catamount 2. What, what were you Brett, giggling as, as, at my Brett, super critical foam? As as a card carrying member of the words mean something club, I feel like the shoe industry has taken a perfectly suitable word critical and added super in front of it. Is there something to be distinguished here? I have no idea what critical foam is. I don't think critical <laughs> foam exists. It's super critical or nothing. So I don't know. Super critical foam. <laughs> They, it's got fancy air blown into it. That's really what it is. But it does it does change the property. So anyone who's running a classic EVA versus a nitrogen infused EVA can notice a pretty significant difference. So awesome to see Kraft already experimenting with uh, different foam materials. It's it's just one big chunk. There's no plates in the shoe or anything. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll talk about that more in a little bit. The outsole is Kraft's own in house rubber, which has gotten kind of mixed reviews you know i think for what the shoe is designed for 
it's fine. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of surface area touching the ground, ton of lugs, you know, it's not, it's, it's not built for, you know, your muddy, loose type trails. It's as craft says, it is their gravel bike, three piece out, outsole construction, pretty generous amount of rubber down, um, underfoot. Finn, what kind of, uh, mileage did you get in this guy? I put 89.1 miles to be exact on this shoe. True to the spirit of the, of the door to trail nature. I think about 40 on the roads around Liberty park in salt Lake, and then another 49 to 50 on trails. And within that breakdown of trails, maybe 10 ish miles of techie, uh, 10 ish miles in the desert at the hobbling hundred this past week. And now maybe 15 there. And then another like 20 just on like the Bonneville shoreline trail here. So decent variety in the shoe. Yeah. I was kind of similar. I tallied up uh, 96 miles in the shoe. I've actually had this pair for quite a bit of time. I actually did a 20 miler on the Western States course uh, back in kind of the early summer and then shelved this shoe until, until we got into our, our official testing, you know, the last few weeks. But I broke this shoe in with a 20 miler from uh, Green Gate to the finish on the Western States course. And then I did a mixture of trail here around Ashland. I did do some road running as well, did uh, a road workout to see how the foam, you know, reacted uh, when, you know, putting down a little, a little bit more power, you know, trying to get some pace going. But yeah, 96 miles. Um, I didn't do anything super gnarly in this shoe. Uh, didn't really come across. I did run some steeper, steeper stuff in it, but, you know, given the running that you did, you know, what did you think of the, the fit and everything for this shoe? Yeah. And I, I, before putting on this shoe and putting some miles on it, I, I was primed by our mutual friend, David Laney, who, uh, called this the Subaru Outback of shoes, which I found to be an incredibly interesting description. Uh, in terms of the fit of the shoe, you know, starting with um, maybe the upper, I, I certainly, and I know that you'll have a lot to say here as well, maybe more than me. I definitely had some issues when it came to lockdown, especially on trails, not so much when I was doing sort of like the door to Liberty Park road type running. A um, couple other issues, angling of the tongue, for whatever reason, when I had when I had it all laced up, chafing on both sides of the sort of tops of my feet, uh, and then also a hard shoe to put on. I'd say the second hardest shoe to put on after the Naked TR that we reviewed a couple months back. Um, I think that this shoe could benefit from a pull tab. I think it's because that heel cup is so flexible. It caused a lot of issues there for me. Um, but other than that, pretty spacious toe box. I think in general, it's a pretty wide platform. Um, had a chance to run two days in, in desert heat conditions on the Havlina course with that kind of put the breathability and ventilation of the upper to test. And I think both checked out there. I felt, felt good in like 90 degree heat in the shoe. So, so I'll stop there, but, um, those were, those were general impressions of sort of the, the upper fit. Finn, I got to call you out on the shoe being hard to put on. It's impossible. So? It's impossible for a shoe to be hard to put on when the tongue isn't even attached to the shoe. Like that's <laughs> well, just you being lazy and not you have unlacing to undo it. the, but like how much you've undone the laces. I, you I, should I do that. You, that's just a PSA to everyone. When you finish your run, un, unlace your shoes. I'm still learning. I'm still getting my associate's like, degree in shoes. Like you see, you see where you see where the laces are hanging out here. They're like I am using all of the lace to loosen up the shoe. That is how it should be when it is not on your foot. The, the craft you, people that are watching this are loving you right now. I mean, it's no. This is not even just craft. This is just for every shoe. But th I mean, it's yeah. It, it, a shoe like this is not hard to put on if you just unlace it. The naked TR hard to put on because you can't unlace it because it has no laces. Um, I, I, I stand by my request for a pull tab. That's just that's just that's just laziness. <laughs> I do like pull tabs though. I will I will side with you on that. For the What'd fit of the shoe, um, th this the fit of the shoe confused me a little bit because putting it on, it almost feels short, but. I don't think it's actually short. I think my foot gets pushed a little bit forward because of the way this heel cup is shaped. Uh, even just looking at it right here, the angle of the heel cup 
goes quite a bit forward. And the actual bottom of my heel here didn't sit all the way up against the back of the shoe because of how deep this heel cup is. Yeah. This is going to be a huge plus for some people. Some people who have massive heel slipping issues, you're probably not going to get that at all in the shoe. I mean, I had zero heel slip issues because of how aggressively bent inward this heel cup is. But because of that, it almost pushed my foot maybe a quarter size forward. So my toes were closer to the front of the shoe, the way my foot sits in it, than some other size 10s. Would I go get a size 10 and a half though? I would not. And that's because the other part of the shoe that confused me with the fit is the uh, the high volume of material around the midfoot. Okay, as as we're talking, we'll show a video of yeah, me yeah. just with the shoes on my feet and how the eyelets are just about touching. So if I went to a 10 and a half, that would only increase the volume of material in the upper. And I bet the eyelets would be completely touching and there would be no way for me to tight the shoe enough. And it's not like I wear my shoes that tight. It's just that there's that much upper material. And that's been a problem with some of the craft shoes in the past. This one is a little bit better. I mean, the CTM Ultra Carbon that I wore a couple years ago, I, I had to go a half size down and like wear it small on my foot because I couldn't get the shoe tight enough because the eyelets were just touching and it was my foot was just wobbling all over the place in it. So this one's a little better, but I feel like the ratios of the materials across like the midfoot, the the midfoot and the forefoot are still a little bit off. If you have a wider foot or a higher volume foot, it's probably going to be a non-issue. But if you're like medium to even slightly lower volume, like I am, I'm nearly got these eyelets all touching. Yeah. So yeah, so it was interesting, you know, kind of then moving on into where I thought this shoe worked the best. The upper then gets a pass because I actually didn't love this shoe on any sort of steeper descending, kind of like you had said, this upper is so minimal. It's so floppy, you know, breathability out in the desert. Great. You know, the very mellow rollers of the Javelina course, this upper can handle that just fine. You start descending like 500 plus feet a mile and my foot was just immediately at the front. Fortunately, the toe bumper is so, so soft. My toes could hit the front and it was fine, but it's definitely not something I would want to do for say 12 plus hours but you know where i really found i liked running in the shoe is on all the same types of terrains where i would actually take a gravel bike so mostly roads dirt roads paved roads the occasional trail but i would actually i don't ride much trail on my gravel bike i'm going to ride a mountain bike for that this shoe works great for those things which then almost has me putting it more into a road shoe type category um what about you? Yeah, I think, again, like you said, very versatile, hybrid type shoe, many surfaces, uh, in my experience, many speeds, many distances. Um, it's not like my automatic go-to for anything, but it also doesn't hold you back in too many settings, maybe in that like technical arena. But like, I was trying to think of a funny analogy. Getting, getting this shoe for any trail circumstance is the equivalent of getting like the fourth or fifth pick in your fantasy football draft. Like you're not totally depressed that you didn't get like a top two or three pick, but you're also like, you, you can work with it. There, there's a lot of, you can still build a team on it. You can, you can, you can build some good mileage on it. So um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There was no, there was no immediate deal breakers on the shoe for why I can't run it, run in it. The upper is close. The, the upper was almost a deal breaker because I almost wasn't able to get it tight enough but I was able to get it tight enough. You know, the only spot where I'm like kind of actively avoiding with the shoe is steeper descending. The other spot that bugged me a little bit when descending steeper stuff was this heel cup because it swoops so far inward on those steeper descents. I could feel it kind of jabbing into my Achilles and it didn't full on piss my Achilles off, but I could feel that my Achilles was like a little bit tender at the end of the few slightly steeper runs I did. but on the roads yeah dude this shoe rocks like it does this midsole foam and like the uh the trend the heel to toe transition i think when running flatter stuff this shoe is very smooth and i don't know i mean did craft just kind of 
make a really nice road shoe? Dude, I ha- I know. I had to learn what carbon fiber midfoot shank was, and I think that's part of the reason why this thing performs so well. This doesn't have a carbon shank. It does. I don't think this has a I don't think this has a carbon I that shank. I did. Um, taking a temporary pause just to check. Um, <laughs> do, 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 no, all, do, all of do. this is just the, f- well, they do say it running warehouse says carbon midfoot shank, but the craft website does not. Dude, we're one in one in this episode. We need some sort of tiebreaker. Where's it? <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> Folks, this is the one time I'm ever going to be right on conversational pace. We should bask in this for a second. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to go to another review and like control find the word carbon. <laughs> so I just searched, I just control finded the word carbon for another major trail shoe reviewer. And that word did not come up at all. I, I swear I saw this on the product description on the craft site. I'm going to text Lanny right now, and then maybe by the end of this review, uh, we'll have an answer because I, I don't know. Like, it's interesting. You're right. It says it on the, uh, running warehouse site, but, um, banana, na na na. we have a breaking <laughs> news update. Let's hear it. I thank you, David Lanny for getting back to me so quick. So this shoe has a carbon shank. Finn, you were right. Wow. But it is Three inches long. Okay. And it is, David actually said, if you pull out the insole, you can see it right under the arch. So it's, it's three inch, it's just a three inch long carbon piece right under the arch. And they put that there to stiffen the shoe, uh, just kind of torsionally oh, because this cut out under the arch made the shoe too flexible and it felt like it was going to break your foot in half. So they just threw that in. So if you actually, if you have the shoe and you take the insole out, you can see just like the little dark carbon shank spot. So, I mean, this is the world's smallest carbon shank in a shoe, but I think you're right though. I couldn't even feel that it was there. It just did what it was supposed to and stayed out of the way. But yeah. So what did, what did you like about um, the underfoot feel of this shoe? I mean, I was telling you offline and, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself or too sensational, but like, I, I I think we both agree. Best thing about this shoe is the midsole, like hands down. It's incredible. I think for what this shoe is, which is a road to trail shoe, the ride of this shoe is, um, it's as close to faultless as I've ever experienced. Um, it makes a lot of normal esque claims. Like when we were doing that normal Serac, review a few months back they tried to sort of like say that this shoe could literally do anything and everything for a trail runner and like with 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 uh with craft here they're saying that the shoe is going to give you max cushioning uh but also in in protection but also performance um and i kind of felt like it hit all of those markers pretty well um like I said, I think the speed does come from that midfoot shank as I was doing research on like what exactly that was, because that was a new term to me. I think that that is where a lot of like the performance parts of this come in. Um, like I said, it's a widish platform, so there's a lot of underfoot protection. I think, is it 40 millimeters? 40 in the heel, 34 uh, in the forefoot. So it's a, it's a big shoe. I mean, yeah. this goes right up with, you know, the Hoka Speed Goats of the world. So basically... The only knock on this that I can think of is again in technical terrain. There, I mean, th- this doesn't bother me that much, but I, I do recognize that there are some people that don't want to go into like steep technical terrain on a shoe with that much stack height and cushion. Like they want a more responsive, closer to the ground feel. This midsole foam is, I think, a huge breakthrough for craft in terms of their footwear and the direction that they're headed. Yeah, let's touch up on like durability a little bit. Okay. I think we got to talk about the uh, the outsole too. Yeah, okay. Um Yeah, let's do that. What did you what did you like? Well, did you like this outsole? What do you think of this outsole? You, you know, I I know you were saying earlier that it's been criticized. Uh certainly the lugs are not huge, so if there's one thing you take from this episode, don't, you know, definitely don't make it your go-to for technical terrain, but um like, like snow I have 90 and mud. Mi- I, yeah, and stone mud. I don't have, I have 90 miles on my shoe and the outsole looks pretty intact. 
So, so the, dur- the durability of it is pretty, I was impressed by that. Like, you know, um, that was good. And then in terms of lug depth uh, of the shoes we've reviewed before this one, I would compare it most to the, I'd say the Hoka Tecton X2. I could actually see mm-hmm. this being a Western state shoe. If I was like, like, if Laney was running states, I could see him going to this shoe. It reminded me a lot of the Tecton X2. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, this is what Eden Nelson wore this year. Oh, she did. At Western States. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and I agree. I mean, running the last 20 miles of the Western States course net, assuming the upper would cooperate with your foot, this is an awesome Western States shoe. I, it wouldn't have been great in the first 50K this past year with all the snow, but, you know, from Robinson flat to the finish, this is a major shoe because, you know, like you had said, this upper being so simple and thin it breathes so well and it drains really well too. I, I totally see this being a Western state shoe. I also agree with what you'd said about the outsole and that like, I don't think Kraft needed to put any more rugged of an outsole on this for, for what it's designed for. If they put the same outsole as say the CTM ultra trail that we reviewed earlier yeah. in the year, that would have just been completely overkill. And then we would have been trying to take it on mega technical terrain. And then we would have just been like, this upper is terrible. It's not a good trail shoe upper. So I think the balance for the midsole, upper, outsole is about right. They just need to tweak a few things with the fit to get it really dialed in. Because, you know, this is a shoe that I could totally see myself running most things in if they can just tweak really just a few things with the upper. I don't think they need to touch the midsole or outsole no. much at all. I just want a few slight revisions to the upper, which has honestly been the case with most of these craft shoes. They've just had kind of upper problems. Are there any, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but when you think about other shoe brands that have had a similar problem, like an upper problem where the rest of the shoe, the outsole midsole is great, and they had to do something about the upper, and they did in sub- in subsequent versions. Do any shoes come to mind for you? The Hoka Speed Goat. I've, there's been some Hoka Speed Goats where I loved the upper, and then some where I hated it. Like, Speed Goat 2 upper was amazing for about 150 miles. Then you blew out the... Then you start to rip the sides on the midfoot. They fixed that for the 3. Speed Goat 3 upper, incredible. Some people were still blowing it out because the shoe was just so durable. So it's like something's got to give at some point. So then they over-engineered the Speedgoat 4 upper, and that thing was 95% plastic. It was terrible. Now they've come back to the Speedgoat 5 upper. It's much more mesh. And assuming that it's not too wide for your foot, it's awesome. So there's definitely, like, the Speedgoat came to mind where it's like, I would actually do most things that I would do in a Speedgoat in this shoe if this upper held my foot down just a little bit yeah i think i think we've probably nailed home our point about how the shoe could be amazing if the upper was just a little bit better would you race in it yeah i would what what would you race in it (laughs) i would race anything in it i think i think sorry i shouldn't say anything i would race anything from 50k to 100 miles that's non-technical i would run i would run western states in it I would run the American River 50 in it. I would run JFK in it. So think, uh so this so you having a slightly higher volume foot does does this upper this upper's good enough for you then for those types of races? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm a, I'm like an almost for what I race in it. Like I would almost race any of those more runnable races in it, but I just don't quite trust this upper enough. Um, especially with this uh, heel cup being a little bit too deep for me, I would worry that I would start to get like some Achilles problems. But, you know, first few runs, I was like, dang, this is almost a really awesome Javelina shoe. But it's just like, it's so close. But hopefully in version two, what do you think about the price point of $160? Fine. Yeah. I think especially especially since it's a utility shoe, since there's so many use cases for it. I think it's a good price point. And I think I would get a lot of miles, like just running roads and some dirt roads. I, even if it's mostly running and a lot of workouts, say that again. I think you can get about 400 miles in this shoe reliably. I was going to say, I bet it's a 400 to 500 miles shoe of, you know, like legit running. 
And for 160 to get a super critical foam, that's that's pretty nice. I, I think that slots, you know, right right there into into that new age 160 under two hundred dollars reasonably priced shoe type category. Are there any shoes from other brands that you would compare it to? Like if if people are in the market for a road to trail option or a utility type shoe, are there any shoes from other brands that come to mind that you would stack it up against? So that was a question that I had for the people who are watching is like, is this a door to trail shoe or is this just a road shoe that you're going to take the, take on the occasional trail? Cause you know, in our, in our, like, I would say our door to trail champion is probably the Hoka challenger. I like this midsole <laughs> foam. I like this midsole foam more than the Hoka challengers, but I like the fit of the Hoka challenger more than this. Nordlight Ultra. The other, you know, door to trail, like Pegasus Trail. That's another one that's great. I think this is better on the roads than the Pegasus Trail. I think the Pegasus Trail is a little bit better on the trails. This is a little bit higher cushion. So there's kind of a lot of back and forth. If you're like a 60 to 70% road with a little bit of trail kind of runner, this might be the perfect shoe for you. Yep. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, I was just thinking about shoes that we've already reviewed that I would compare it to. Um, like maybe the Tecton X, like you said, that's Tecton probably X. a really close one. Yep. And then in terms of the plushness too, like the Trabuco Max too. Um, yeah. I think this is a faster shoe than that. I agree. Um, this feels like it's got more rebound. And then we haven't reviewed this, but this is a shoe that I've worn in the past. The um, Super Comp Trainer from New Balance. Oh yeah. Uh, like doesn't have, you know, this obviously doesn't have the carbon plate, but uh, it kind of had shades of that for me too. Yeah, it's got it's got the carbon shank. You know that counts for something. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these I'm gonna keep these in the in the rotation because I'm I'm honestly I'm just gonna log road miles in this shoe. Uh, I like it as a road shoe. But if you do want to try these shoes and your local run specialty shop does not have them, feel free to use our link below to try out the craft Nordlight Ultra from our friends over at Running Warehouse. Your purchase helps support the channel allows us to keep creating shoe reviews like this. We are absolutely still going to review the remaining two shoes from the three shoe poll, which was the uh, Solomon, what is it called? The Thundercross? Thundercross. And, then and the Topo. Topo Mountain Racer 3. Which one we do next will be to be determined, but we'll see you guys out there on the trails.